Psalm 1 was read responsibly by the congregation. And then we had the Old Testament reading from Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 33, the virtuous woman, woman. The New Testament reading was from James chapter 3, verses 3 to 13 to 4, verse 3 and 7 and 8a. Talking about true wisdom, heavenly wisdom, and conducting our lives in wisdom. And the gospel reading was from Mark chapter 9, 30 to 37, where the Lord speaks of his impending death, which is not accepted by Peter. And they could not understand that he must die. And they were quibbling among themselves as to who is the greatest. And then Jesus places a little child in their midst and says, unless you become as a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Living Walking righteously in wisdom, humility, and service. These are readings given to us in the revised common lectionary. And if you and I sometimes read it, we find wonder what is the kind of the theme running through these texts. But there is always a theme. The lectionary is very, very well thought out. Walking righteously in wisdom, humility, and service. Psalm 1 and Proverbs 31 speak about the righteous person. Two different perspectives. The righteous person in Psalm 1 avoids sinful influences. Yes, he does not sit in the seat of sinners or scoffers because bad company can influence you. But you got to be strong like Lord Jesus Christ to be in the company of publicans and sinners, not to be influenced by them, but to be an influencer. Because this particular verse is in contradiction to the life of Jesus, who was known as a friend of publicans and sinners. A a glutton and a wine bibber. He loved to participate in conversation and have good food. But he was accused of gluttony, which was actually an accusation being made. But he affirmed life. But here the psalmist says to us common people that we must be careful of the company we keep because we can be influenced by the company we keep. A judgment has to be made in the light of the life of Jesus Christ. Secondly, a righteous person delights in the word of the Lord, in God's law, delights and meditates on it day and night. There is a love for God seen in obedience to God's word. Thirdly, a righteous person is fruitful and prospers spiritually, bears good fruit, and such a person lives with a clean conscience. 
and, and is able to stand in the courtroom of God knowing that God will stand by him or her. Similarly, the righteous woman of, Psalm, of Proverbs 31 is a person who is diligent and hardworking, works for the family and is engaged in profitable work, keeping the family in mind, is generous and caring to the outsiders and speaks with wisdom and kindness, fears the Lord and is supportive of her husband who is respected in the public square. And she herself is respected and honored. Walking righteously in wisdom, humility, and service. Where is wisdom to be found? Is a question that appears thrice in the book of Job chapter 28. The three friends have spoken to Job. They have given him their views of why he is suffering. Job affirms that he has not done anything wrong to deserve that kind of suffering and questions the justice of God because there seems to be unfairness. And Job makes his last speech before Elihu, the mediator, speaks and then God speaks. Then, of course, Job responds in repentance. Job asks the question rhetorically and goes on to answer that wisdom cannot be found in the depths of the earth or depths of the sea. It is more precious than gold. And he finally says that wisdom can only be found in God. He's preparing the ground for these friends that you don't have wisdom. We have to look to God for wisdom. There is no answer. The answer has to come from God. The answer comes in the book of Job when God asks him a lot of questions and he's not able to answer anything. We have to accept our creatureliness before God. We have to accept the knowledge and wisdom of God in which he has created the universe. There is suffering. But in the midst of that, we have to trust God that he will act justly. The just shall live by faith is the same verse same response that comes in Habakkuk. And we live even in the midst of our difficulties by grace. The words of the Lord to Paul, my grace is sufficient. And my strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul and James also dwell on the theme of, of wisdom. James speaks about wisdom from above and wisdom from below. Heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom. 
earthly wisdom he says is tied to selfishness selfish ambition selfish desires which leads to conflict disorder heavenly wisdom leads to reconciliation peace prosperity goodness paul says that jesus christ is the wisdom of god and the power of god and the cross reveals god's wisdom it is the work of atonement and reconciliation demonstrated on the cross that is the wisdom of god today our world is in tremendous conflict conflicts have always been there we thought that after the first world war things will be better after the second world war the world got together in the league of nations then the united nations organization but we are not able to solve our problems the leaders that we elect are not able to solve our problems they are not able to bring peace and reconciliation and act justly and there is tremendous suffering that people are put to and prophets have to arise and speak i sometimes listen to youtube Bernie Sanders is a Jew but you must hear him speak and when you hear him speak you will realize how the prophets stood alone speaking truth in love into a conflict they are loners and we must be a thinking congregation and we must be close to the word god has his people who speak with wisdom but do the leaders of the world listen no atonement and reconciliation are at the heart of the gospel and that is the wisdom of god unless there is atonement we will keep having scapegoats we will keep sacrificing people we will keep hurting others violence has to end in word and indeed violence with the pen and the sword have to end and the way has been shown to us in the cross unfortunately the way most of us who are followers of jesus christ take that only for personal salvation i'm a sinner i was going to go to hell and now i'm going to go to heaven as if god created heaven and hell in the beginning my friend jacob cherian begins his sessions on the kingdom of god by making people read genesis 1 1 to 3 and and then when it is being read he says so the text what does it say in the beginning god created heaven and hell correct and everybody is silent because they are shocked and we read that text because we read it so often we don't even pay attention my dear friends this notion of hell has come from dante the inferno why do we create 
create neurotic Christians by creating fear in the hearts of people. We follow God because we love him. Not because we are fearful for him. Fearful that we will go into the lake of fire which is Gehennam. It is a place outside the city gates of Jerusalem. The dump yard. That was a metaphor. I raise my voice and speak my friends because this misunderstanding persists. When I was an 18-year-old boy, Dr. Habib Yusuf Ji, who took me under his wings at that age and explained to me what is Gehennam and what is hell. Hell is Hades, a Greek word, which is the underworld, heaven, earth, hell. Let us get this straight and let us not diminish Christianity to heaven and hell. It is a much deeper, much greater understanding. There is no parallel to this in any ideology. I am a student of philosophy. I am a student of theology. I teach the history of philosophy and I teach the history of theology. I do not make much of myself. But today I must raise my voice. Because this kind of interpretation must stop. We don't want neurotic Christians. Out of fear we pray. Out of fear we go to church. Out of fear we want to follow Christ. That's not Christianity. The wisdom of God is in the cross. Do not be afraid. Rahul Gandhi <coughs> doesn't maybe knowing the gospel he has a Catholic side to him. But he says Daro mat or Darao mat. Do not be fearful and do not scare other people. In this country in the last 10 years we have been we have been Fear psychosis has been created in this country. We are afraid. The air is thick. The clouds are dark. And he is speaking what is in the scriptures because Jesus always when he appears he says fear not. Fear not. Please banish fear from your minds and your hearts forever. God created us for fellowship. God created us for love. God wants us. He doesn't reject us. He, he stands as the prodigal father, the generous father, the father who was generous to a fault. He stands there waiting for his son with open arms. That is God. That is the image that Jesus has given us. That is God. He is always waiting for us. Don't torment yourself and don't allow anybody to torment you with this diminished understanding of Christianity. This is not Christianity. If I don't speak in a blunt manner, God will hold me responsible. Gospel is the gospel of love. Gospel is God's rule of love. Live, walking righteously in wisdom, in humility and service. Unless you become as a little child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. The only way we can have access into God's presence is humility. When we come to the Lord's table, in the liturgy it says, the prayer of humble access. The prayer of humble access. We come in humility and repentance.
there is no other way to come to God. We have to get rid of any notions of pride. If there was someone, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, Paul was also probably tempted because he, he does write, I am a Pharisee of Pharisees, I belong to the tribe of Benjamin. And, you know, he's narrating, I can boast about all these things. That means it crossed his mind. When other people boast about their lineage, their background, he is also provoked, I can also tell you who I am. I've been a student of Gamaliel. So, Paul could have boasted, but he says, I boast in my weakness. And I am the chief of sinners. Humility will not allow us, allow our minds to go in that direction. Once a person told me that the way to cultivate humility and simplicity he was an American gentleman. I don't remember his name, I don't remember his face, but I remember his words. He said, spend time with common people. With ordinary people. With illiterate people. Spend time with the poor. Sit with them. Listen to them and you will be surprised how much they have to teach you. Jesus Christ was a friend of commoners. The text says the common people heard him gladly. The Pharisees, Sadducees and scribes, they sat there to pick holes in his sermons. And it's the common people who ran after him. And he gave himself in service to his last breath. He was serving the convict who was crucified next to him and asked him, remember me in paradise. Remember me, Lord. And he said, I will remember you today in, you will be with me today in paradise. Those are words of comfort to a dying man, by a dying man, till his last breath, he was able to offer succor to somebody. That is service. Almighty and eternal God, we pray that you will come to us in a very special way and minister to our hearts. Help us to walk righteously in wisdom, humility and service. Prepare us as we come to this table. In Christ's name, Amen. Amen.